everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Roca, as you heard, and I'm in the I'm interested in the centralization movement. And um, uh, I'd like to give you a quick tour on the consensus algorithms that exists uh, today. Uh, since Bitcoin um, started in 2008, a lot of projects um, have started crypto projects, and there are many many uh, consensus algorithms. And it's very difficult sometimes to, to navigate around them, so I'm trying to give you a quick tour and um, so you can get a feel for, for what the, the differences between them. Uh, we will not go into depth on these because there are so many that I rather want to go through them uh, and uh, not bog down in, in, in a specific one. Um, let me start with the question. Who can tell me what money is? Who can give me a definition? For, for what, what is money. I can offer you uh, 10 Hydra coins. It's the <laughs> coin that we are developing if you, if you give me a correct answer. <coughs> it's worth quite some money, so. Anyone? A definition of what money is? A medium of exchange. A medium of exchange. Right? That's all? More. Store of value. Okay, yeah. Story most people believe. Oh, interesting. <laughs> <man. laughs> yeah, the story was yes, the quantum <laughs> economical communication. By quantum, like uh, in physics, so it transfers the action from one place to another. Uh huh. That's sort of the mean you know, exchange. More or less, but in a more formal way. Yes. All right, yes. Uh, usually, um, these are the answers. Uh, it's a means of exchange, a unit of measurement, and store of value. That's the, the usual ones. But uh, for that, money has to have value, right? So, so, it, so if I want to exchange my eggs to money so that uh, maybe I have hands or, or uh, I'm, I'm giving a service, I'm, I'm making uh, um, haircuts, and I want to um, exchange that I need eggs. Uh, and the money comes in as a medium of exchange, so I can swap uh, the service that I'm doing to money and then the money to eggs that I can eat, uh, then uh, the money has to have value in between, otherwise um, it wouldn't work. So what gives money its value? Why, why can I use that as a store of value? Why can I use it as a, as a unit of measurement? And uh, what, what gives the value to it? Scarcity, for example. Scarcity, for example. Scarcity. It's a good point. Because uh, for, for a long, long time, money was uh, like uh, uh, precious metals, uh, gold, and, and uh, they made coins of gold and silver. But uh, uh, what is scarcity when you talk about a foreign bill or a, or a dollar bill? Because I can print as much as... Well, I cannot. But uh, people who have the right tools, the, the right printing press, can print as many as they want. So what's the difference between the, the $1,000 bill or $100 bill and the monopoly bill that I can buy with the game and it comes with you know these bills, uh, um, the pack of bills, uh, with the same sort of paper. Uh, what makes the dollar bill have value that I can store value in that dollar bill? Any idea? The agreement that you can do it, I mean, the consensus itself of the society that we should use <coughs> certain uh, legit signing ways to verify which uh, notes you can use and which you cannot? Uh, basically, yes. Um, so, I'm, someone comes into my shop and wants to pay with a $100 bill, and I'm accepting this $100 bill because I know that the person who is giving the X will accept this hundred dollar bill. And he and he's accepting the hundred dollar bill because he knows that the next time he goes to buy broccoli, they will accept the hundred dollar bill. Right? No one will accept the monopoly <coughs> money, but they will accept the hundred dollar bill. So it's interesting thing that you know the, the bizarre self-reference here that I'm accepting the hundred dollar bill because I know that you will accept the hundred dollar bill and you accept it because you know that I will accept it. Right? Yeah. So if this is broken no one will accept it. So it's either everyone is accepting it, at least at the, some geographical location, or uh, no one is accepting it. So this is a consensus. This is probably the best example of a consensus. 
that we all agree on that this hundred dollar bill has a certain value and uh, it only works if we all agree on this fact so uh, and since we uh, in 1975 uh, there was a, a Bretton Woods agreement where they stopped uh, uh, connecting the US dollar for example to gold before that there was basically the US dollar was just a just a bill that could be uh, exchanged for gold in, in the treasury that was uh, but they, they um, stopped this, so now, now it's just a uh, piece of paper that we all agree on that has, has value, <coughs> nothing else. It's, it's just a pure consensus, it's the best example of a consensus that uh, someone can come up with. Uh, so, so that's what we will look at, this kind of uh, consensus that, uh, that money is. And uh, what is needed for, for uh, to have a... Uh, Consensus. There are some technical requirements for, for money to work. Um, the state of the system, that is, that who has how much, so that we have to be able to agree on that you have money. You come to my shop and you want to pay for something. Um, I have to know that you have the money, and we and I everyone has to agree that you have that money, and um, the money should be in limited supply because uh, if, if anyone can print it ad infinitum, then um, it would not work, it would not be fair, and because it would not be fair, people would stop accepting it, and the consensus is broken if people stop accepting it, right? So, so it, I, I bet you would not accept money that you know that there is a guy somewhere who, who is just printing it like, okay, he wants to have some fun, so he prints some more. Um, the consensus would be broken. So these are very trivial rules that has to be um, uh, hold for, for, for our consensus on money to, to to work, but it's totally fine because there are, you know, we have good large organizations that uh, uh, came up with a good solution how to uh, uh, do this, uh, how to make these two points possible, and they figured out a system where they, uh, where an authority operates uh, the system, and uh, you know, you probably heard this word fiat money that we all use. This is today's money is fiat money. And this word fiat uh, means bead, basically. That's, that's the word's meaning. So that's what I just um, uh, we discussed just recently, that, that it has value because someone says bead. And it's usually a, a government, like the US government can say that dollar has value. And I say so. And uh, then everyone says, OK, dollar has value. And I'm accepting it. And everyone is accepting it. So it's, it's kind of a forced consensus on you because you can only pay your taxes in dollars so even if someone comes into your sh uh, shop and gives you X for the haircut you still have to pay your taxes in dollars so there is a demand for dollars and uh, it's kind of a forced agreement on you and it also requires a lot of trust in this authority that, for, that uh, like I said there is the, the printing press is somewhere so someone is printing the dollars right so um, I have to trust this uh, authority that he's not printing in, in the evening at midnight, he's not printing some uh, money that I don't know about and, and letting it, uh, you know, use it for some uh, means that I don't know about. So it requires a lot of, a lot of trust in this uh, authority <coughs> that is doing the system, uh, but they basically, uh, the technical solution to the problem that we have to know the state and it cannot be printed ad infinitum, is that uh, you either have banknotes, and the banknotes cannot be uh, um, forged. So if someone comes up to my shop and shows a banknote, I can be sure that, that the authority printed that banknote, supposedly, and then we know that he is entitled to have that money. And the other one is the bank money, which is digital money purely. We also have that nowadays. And uh, there, what stops them to, to print what stops the bank to print any amount of, of money? Well, they are connected into this uh, chain of uh, federated system. There's a central bank. The central bank regulates the other banks. Uh, the banks uh, then um, have to follow rules. They can print some money. If they, they give you credit for your house, they actually print that money from, from, uh, from nothing. And then it uh, suddenly appears in the economy. Um, but this is uh, very well supervised. So they just cannot print at infinitum. Uh, there is certain rules how much, 
how much money they can bring. So this solution has worked very well, but like I said, it, it required uh, trust. And something happened in, uh, like, there was a big uh, financial crisis, uh, we probably know in 2006, uh, 7 run, and this trust has been uh, <laughs> diminished a lot in the, some, some people's uh, uh, minds. There was less trust in the banking system because they were just letting out, uh, you know, um, uh, loans that, and, um, and this guy uh, called Satoshi Nakamoto came up with a new type of uh, consensus, I would call it crypto consensus, which actually doesn't require any trust in any authority, and it's this consensus is not forced on the participants, but the participant actually uh, just joins this consensus on its own will, if he wants to, leaves it whenever he wants to, and um, he provided a technical solution to this. It's not a trivial problem, actually. Uh, it's a very difficult one, because uh, uh, the bearer notes that the, the, the printed uh, bills um, cannot be uh, reproduced in, in a uh, distributed way. Because uh, anything that is digital uh, can be copied. So I cannot create some sort of a digital bearer note and send it to you because I still have it myself. So then there is $200 which of these. You cannot do that. Uh, you had to come up, to do this uh, trustless uh, solution, you had to come up with a way to create a distributed database with a distributed consensus mechanism uh, that works without any authority and works without uh, uh, any central um, location. So what he did is that uh, replaced the server with distributed uh, database. Because what we had is like the bank before, the bank had a server and the server stored who has how much money. So if I wanted to know, if, uh, if someone wanted to transfer money, it talked to the server and uh, instructed the server to send some money from here to there and then something in the, in the background, some clearing processes happened, the bank discussed it with each other but basically it was all about servers and trusted servers of the banks and you communicating with these servers and they, he wanted to uh, break down this, this um, uh, trust and uh, create a peer-to-peer -peer system uh, with thousands of nodes where no node has to trust any node and still agree on, uh, still create this consensus where we all know what each other, what, who has what. And, uh, and this is what happened in 2008 and this is, uh, it's a revolutionary moment in the sense that it was never possible before to do this thing. Um, so to agree on a consensus on the state, uh, we need to agree on what is a valid transaction and we also need to agree on what is uh, the actual transaction order because it's it's um, the first one is is the simpler one the because uh, basically through cryptography we can do for 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 uh, decades now we can do cryptography where someone holds a private key and if he signs with the corresponding public key uh, with the um, uh, private key then. Um, we, we can be sure that he is the originator. So, so he can say that I transfer you money and we know that he said that. It's, it's, it's fine. But the problem is that on a peer-to-peer -peer network, the way it works, it's, it's um, totally asynchronous. So someone starting to send a transaction from here, it, uh, uh, you don't know, for, for, for some period of time, half of the network will see that transaction, other half of the network have not seen that transaction yet but have seen other transactions, right? So when, when the transactions start to flow around in the system, different nodes see a different, they see them in a different order. And this is a very um, subtle but important part because if someone sends the same money to two places, then it is very important in which order those happen because only the first one will be a valid transaction, the second one, you cannot spend it again. Um, so in order to be in agreement who, on who has what, we have to be in agreement on what is the order of the transactions. And this is where the blockchain, this uh, new invention comes in. And uh, basically, you probably are familiar with it because your, your uh, 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 
already most of you are developers and have worked with blockchain, so you know how it works. Um, that basically uh, the main idea is to create blocks of these transactions so that in the block it's already uh, in an order. But uh, before the block, they just float around and we, we say they are not confirmed yet because there could be conflicts uh, in the orders. But once uh, someone uh, says that this is a block and now I say this is official, this order is official, and I chain this block to the other blocks that are already official, then this block became the official, official state of, of things and we all accept it as, as the consensus state. This is the state uh, what's, in the, what's in the block. That's the order of the transactions. From the order of the transactions, we can uh, reconstitute the, the new state. And uh, the, the big invention was actually one of the big inventions to add a bit of proof of work onto these blocks, so make it hard to create them. Why is it important to make it hard to create them? Because if it's totally free to create them, uh, you can think about it. It won't build a consensus. So. Uh, if people can just create blocks whenever they want, they will create not necessarily a chain, a, a one-line chain, but they will create like uh, forks whenever they want. So, so stuff like that will happen. People will, will just create blocks and other people will put a block on, on top of an old uh, uh, block. And then what? Then what is the state? Is this the state or is this the state? Like, or, or is this the state or this is the state? So what, what, what uh, forces us to have a consensus on the state? And the, the, the force that creates this uh, consensus is the fact that we all agree on that the most proof of work uh, version is the official reality. So if this chain has the most proof of work contained in the headers, then that's the official chain. Uh, and since we all agree on this, this is a consensus like, like money is, um, it's not worth to build this block because it, the others will never accept it as truth. So I and since I have to spend a lot of electricity, spend a lot of money on electricity to generate these blocks because they are costly, I'm wasting my resources creating these blocks. So everyone will be uh, heavily working on creating blocks on top of the black uh, chain, uh, and this is the force that creates the consensus. So, uh, but this is not perfect, as you all know, because it wastes a lot of wastes a lot of energy. I'll get back to that. Because um, round now, like uh, Bitcoin network can do like seven transactions per second, and it uh, burns uh, the electricity of uh, Sweden, I heard, or or Denmark. I'm not sure. Someone said. Uh, so it's, it looks like a bit of waste for seven transactions per second. Uh, it also has scaling problems. Um, um, it's a huge, you need a huge storage space and fees were uh, very high for a while, I think they are back now. It has a long confirmation time relatively, you need to be 10 minutes for one confirmation and it's recommended to wait for six confirmations to get something uh, really surely. Uh, so like an hour, well I cannot buy a coffee and wait an hour for you know payment to get through. And, um, it, it created a concentration of power in the hands of the miners. And, and you know that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, the designer of Bitcoin, didn't think about this uh, concentration at that time. His idea was that every people uh, with a computer would be doing, running this Bitcoin software and it would be doing transacting and a little bit of mining in the background. So, but uh, since it, that came specialized hardware which could do the mining, and now a few uh, mining pools and uh, ASIC miners control most of this process and they are the only ones doing the mining and you cannot do mining anymore. So uh, this concentrates the power in their hand and they are not stakeholders in the system in the sense once they mine the Bitcoin, they usually sell it immediately. They don't really care what it is, it's just a pure source of money for them, it's the business. And um, uh, they not really care about uh, uh, what happens in the, in the Bitcoin um, uh, system. So. It's not really good because uh, to, to outsource part of the process to, to people who, are, who don't really care about your system. Also, the fifth problem, you cannot launch new instances. By that, I mean that um, someone comes up with a new coin, a new uh, money, new way of currency, 
and uh, it wants to launch a similar separate network, separate from Bitcoin. Uh, he has serious problems because, because uh, if you also want to apply this proof of work algorithm, then he is now having a small network and there is a huge network of Bitcoin miners and they just allocate like a little bit of their resources to attack his network and uh, immediately they are overpowering it. So, so you cannot really launch a Bitcoin-like currency nowadays. It, it, so anyone who does that is very risky. And, and, um, uh, so these are, the, these are serious problems uh, with Bitcoin and there are many, many attempts. You know, probably thousands of coins are out there that try to come up with a better, they always say it's better, a solution. Um, and some of, it, some of it stay within this proof of work um, framework, like uh, I would just mention the Litecoin, which uh, has a reduced confirmation time and uh, replaced the hashing algorithm so that ASICs are not uh, uh, able to do it as of now. And, um, but obviously you can create new ASICs and, and if, if this Litecoin becomes so popular. Uh, also, um, Name, I mentioned Namecoin and Rootstock uh, that is trying to solve the, the problem of this last problem that other coins cannot um, compete, uh, cannot run side by side with Bitcoin because uh, uh, they are too small. So they are trying to, to pull in hash power from the Bitcoin miners and use that hash power to actually secure the coin. It's uh, quite a complex uh, process, uh, I'm not going into that right now. Uh, but uh, there are some problems uh, from, from the, um, especially the, the first and the fourth, that uh, people look outside of the proof of work uh, consensus algorithm to solve. And one of, one of it is proof of stake. And um, it, it, go, it uh, goes along the idea that, that um, the Bitcoin works because if you read the original Bitcoin mind paper, it says that um, economically, if someone has a pro if someone has enough resources to buy the electricity and the ASICs and whatever to, to get a 51% attack, so for 51% attack that he, he dominates the network. If he has so many resources, it's um, he is much better off actually using those resources to mine and make bitcoins instead of attacking bitcoin and destroying bitcoin. So it's, it's, it's an economical argument to use uh, an economical argument that protects the network. And um, people thought that why can't we do this with coins themselves? So we can, if you translate this thinking that if someone has a lot of coins in the system, he will not attack the system because he will lose the most by his coins getting worthless. So that's the idea of replacing the energy uh, burning uh, sacrifice, so to speak, to a coin sort of uh, 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 sacrifice. That uh, you put your coins uh, on stake uh, when you do the mining. And basically all we need to do is, is um, select the next <laughs> block producer. Right? So the, the only problem that needs to be solved in order to create this consensus system is that we should have someone come up with the next block, official block, and we should have this um, in such a way that we can agree on the next block. So it's not like blocks are just flying around and we don't know which one is the official, but uh, we, have, we have to pick someone who creates the next block, and that uh, has to be official, and we all have to agree on that. And the way they do it, is uh, with the proof of stake, there are many uh, possible ways. Um, I just mentioned one important thing that um, proof of stake is not a consensus algorithm. It's actually uh, hundreds of consensus algorithms uh, grouped under this terminology of proof of stake. So any, any consensus algorithm that somehow uh, tries to uh, connect the, the actual stake of the user, how many coins he has, to the block producing process is called the proof of stake nowadays. But it's like a, a wide area of, of, of uh, uh, algorithms. We will get, we see a few of them. Uh, I will just mention a trivial example 
just to get a feel for, for how we could potentially, uh, this is just for illustration, there is no such uh, um, algorithm. To follow the Satoshi, let's say we could number all the, the smallest increments in the coin. We can number them in the system, and we, each, uh, and we make a random generation. And whoever owns the piece that we, uh, the lottery gave out can produce the next block. It sounds simple, and it probably could work uh, to some extent to, to, get the next, to, to, to get the next block producer. Uh, and to uh, you know, replace the proof work um, uh, lottery to this, this lottery. But it has uh, serious problems because it's, it's totally not trivial how to generate a random number on the um, on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Because the peer-to-peer -peer network can only work on the uh, state that everyone has consensus on, right? So it's not like someone can come up with a random number and everyone agrees on that. It's it's a the, the random number has to be coming from the state that we all have consensus on, so we can have consensus on the random number. But once it happens, uh, once you have to generate it from the from the uh, blockchain, then someone can play it because you can all, everyone sees the blockchain, so you can have uh, ways to, to to game that that uh, we'll see uh, shortly. And uh, what if the winner that we we, we selected doesn't uh, come up with the block? We pick the Satoshi and the guy who owns it doesn't come up with the block. That's another problem. And, and these uh, problems, different coins um, try to solve it differently. Um, there are many ways, like, uh, like Ouroboros is a very new one, it's very popular nowadays. And he uses this for the Satoshi, but they invented a special um, peer to peer distributed coin flip mechanism for, the, for random, number, random number generation. And, um, but I will not go into uh, a complex system like Ouroboros for now. I will show you the, the, another way that the original POS systems worked uh, in the beginning. So the first one was actually peer coin and then next followed. And they worked on the idea that uh, slightly changing the, the hashing requirement you know, with, with, with uh, proof of work, uh, it works like you have to come up with a block where the block hash is lower than M denotes the, the space of the hash space. So if it's, two, if it's uh, SHA-256, then it's uh, two, uh, and, uh, 2 on the power of uh, uh, 256 minus 1. The space divided by the difficulty, T is the difficulty, so the, the higher the difficulty is, the lower the hash you have to come up with, and it's harder to come up with that low hash. Um, so what if we replace it, in general, with the second line, where we remove the current block, replace it with the previous block, we add the address and the time, and on the right we put in the balance of the address, so that it's uh, the more coins the address has, uh, has a better chance to, to uh, 